welcome back friends it's a, another beautiful crisp fall day we're starting to get our hard frost and we're supposed to have some snow and ice coming this weekend I think for the first time this year or, or there's a good chance of it so we're back in the forest we're gonna be uh, finishing up uh, processing uh, the sawmill logs and uh, we've got Jack and I've got some firewood and stuff to cut and then the cleaning up and the, the critter habitat but today we're going to deal with uh, this stump. Um, I'm going to show you a kind of a cool trick that I learned from uh, Joe Salatin on how to clean these stumps up so they just look really nice, uh, that they don't become a hindrance uh, for future skidding or for running equipment around in or just, you know, just there's nothing that looks worse than an unsightly stump. Um, I think you're going to like this trick. This trick, it looks really cool. So believe it or not, Jack, this is part of your homeschooling. Is it? Yeah, I get to I get to teach you the fun stuff, and Mama has gets to teach you the, the stuff that's not so fun. I have a feeling our classes would disagree with that. This is homeschooling. <laughs> I think it's definitely homeschooling. It's the best type of schooling here. Okay, so we've got a, we've got a pretty big stump. We're probably what almost uh, three feet at the base here, and I we just don't want to leave it like this. But we still have a pretty good chunk of firewood right here. I mean, we have like four days of firewood right here if we could take advantage of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we'll take the big saw and I'm gonna cut this down to the ground as low as possible. Now the problem with that is that if there's a lot of weight, there's a, you know, probably a couple hundred pounds sitting up here, it's gonna wanna fall down on the bar and pinch the bar. So what your job's gonna be is to go around opposite me as I'm cutting and I want you to put two wedges in one at uh, 10 o'clock and one at about three o'clock or so. Okay. As I'm cutting through and I keep moving those and, and as I get close to the edge, you bring those around um, and then uh, it won't, when it sits down to sit on the wedges, it won't pinch the bar. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking, uh, brushing all this dirt away so that we can cut as low to the ground as possible. And by uh, removing all the dirt, it'll stop the chainsaw from getting dulled on any rocks or the dirt that's here. Looks like you got some new work duds. Yes, I do. How come you chose the overalls? Because uh, they're easier to fit into. They're easier to get into? Mm-hmm. Because you don't have to wear a belt? That too. We got Jack some proper boots too. I, I agree with the, co the comments. A lot of people weren't too keen on you cutting uh, with Sorrells on, and I, I have to agree. It's, that's that's pretty appropriate. You're growing out of you're growing out of boots faster than I can buy them. They weren't very keen on me wearing Sorrells. And those have steel toes on them, so those would be nice. Uh -huh. Oh, hold on a minute. Am I wrong about those toes? Maybe. What type of toes do they have? Hard toes. They're hard toes. They're not steel toes. Uh -uh. So I raked around here and just cleared it up so now we can cut lower to the ground and not have to worry about the dirt as much.
So I cut the stump down close as I could to the ground. Uh, Jack helped me with the wedges to keep it from pinching the bar. It's such a huge piece of wood. What we're going to do now is we're just going to quarter it. We'll cut it into two sections or four sections just so it's easier to move around. Then we can split it for firewood. You ready, bud? Mm hmm. Okay, Jack, I got that cut in half. See if you've got enough horsepower to roll one of those off of there. So listen up, I'm not gonna tell you how to do it, but I'm gonna tell you you've got three tools at your disposal, three tools with wooden handles. Use those to your best advantage to move that off of there. I don't think I need any of those tools, Papa. What's going to be downhill when that rolls? Me. Uh-huh, what else? Uh, our bag. Uh-huh, deal with that. That's why it's flat and it won't roll. <laughs> okay, I hope you're right. I do too. Pretty handy to be big and strong, isn't it? Huh? Pretty handy to be big and strong. Now here's the cool part. Okay, once you once you get that cut down to the close to the ground as you can, then take your forest rake here and rake out all the dirt as much as you can without putting don't spend too much time on it, but if you can get a couple inches there, Jack. That's a good thing. So here's our stump from on top. See, even if you just leave it like that, that looks, it's a whole lot better than it's sticking up. But what happens is, especially if you're running equipment around, it'll get hung up on stuff. And you can see right there that Jack and I are gonna need to skid that log out of there. There's no way, that thing would have for sure hung up on that stump. But when we're done with it, it'll just bounce lightly right over the top. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically just round off the edges, make kind of a, a convex uh, type of a shape. We'll work around here, keeping the tip out, and I'll just work around, work around. So I'll do a little bit of it here, Jack, and then I'll have you try a little with your saw, okay? Okay. Kind of what it looks like here and uh, you cut this right down to the ground you see how I've done this and I and I just kind of do different angles to give it kind of that neat looking organic look but it really looks nice it's just so much better than a than a, just a big heavy square chopped off stump and then uh, we're not done yet so I'm gonna have Jack I'm gonna have you do this last little section right here with your saw I'll show you how to do it and then I'll show you how to do a plunge cut. And what we'll do is we'll cut a deep three, almost a three foot cross right in the center and that will collect rainwater. And that will really help to break down the stump. Uh, water will get in there and, and bugs and, and critters will get down in there and start eating away at the stump and it will, uh, it will break down faster. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So why don't you get your saw fired up and then we'll uh, do this last little leg of the stump.
job. Not only did you cut the stump, you cut the dirt too. I got a bit mad at the wood. <laughs> that's all right. That's how you learn. Uh, but just uh, just so you know, you know when you're coming through something, whether it be a buck or even mushrooming a stump, when you're looking about to break through, lighten up that pressure, and that way maybe that, cut from the other side. Yeah, or you could cut from the other side, but uh, that's all right. That's how you learn. Now you get to learn how to sharpen. That's hard hard work though, working the saw at that angle. Good way, good job of sticking to it and not giving up. All right, you want to do this last little bit? Or you want me to knock it out? You can knock it out. Okay. Okay, so you can see that's the that's what a mushroom stump looks like. It just has a beautiful organic look to it. Yeah, so it takes 10, 15 minutes to do. But this is a great big one. Little stumps are a lot quicker. Uh, but now we're not going to have things hanging up. It's going to break down quicker. And it just kind of, rather than just being a, sticking out like a sore thumb in the forest, it looks it just looks more, I don't know, it just softens it all up. It just looks better. So now I'm going to show you how to do a plunge cut. I'm not going to have you do it yet. It's a little bit dangerous, a little too dangerous for a new time first cutter or a first time cutter. But what I'll do is we'll plunge the saw in and we'll go down and we'll do a cross right here and that will be good for collecting water. So keep, uh, just gotta watch how I do it. You'll see that I'll start with the bar on the bottom edge. Remember, where's the danger zone on a bar? Uh, the, the front to the top. Right, if it were a clock, it'd be from nine o'clock to 12 to the top. But once I start the saw, you'll see me tip it in and then I can go straight down and the kerf will prevent that saw from from kicking out there's no place it can go why is it dangerous because uh it'll do it'll kick back i can get the bottom when it, you're starting kicking back but like if you had dug in would it be dangerous no once it's in the kerf once it's in the hole then then you're good it just takes finesse and skill not to bog the saw or to, or to kill the saw <laughs> Okay, so by doing that plunge cut, now you can see right there, we're gonna have all the water and bugs and critters running down off in there, and that will help to break up the stump. Now there's only one last thing we wanna do. What's that, Jack? Uh, put our stuff away? No. Um, what? Remember one and three? The nursery. Oh, are we gonna plant mushrooms? <laughs> no, we're gonna plant conifers. Mm. So when you go into the forest, now, next time you're out there, look at uh, look at an old stump, and what you typically see around that stump is is a, a bunch of little baby trees. And the reason why that is is that there's the big the adult tree expends a, a tremendous amount of energy pushing its roots down into the soil, breaking up the hard soil, the hard pan, breaking up the rocks. And when it dies, uh, all it, it's uh, the little trees will oftentimes start right there and kind of uh, are just piggybacking off of all the effort that the big tree did. And also that, when this rots, then they can use the, it as kind of like fertilizer. Exactly, it, it's like a mulch, it it's give, gives them nutrients, uh, it's just everything that they need. So if you wanna, you'll oftentimes have really good success planting little ones if you can plant them around a stump. Um, so we didn't bring our hoe dad down here, but I'll show you a trick, Jack, that you can do. We can use our wedge, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll pound that down in there, right? And we have a dirty wedge. Right, and open that up like that. Back and forth, see that? Mm-hmm, then we plant a tree. Right, and then your little ones, if you don't, it would be better to have a bucket of water, but if you can just give them, keep those roots wet, that's the most important thing. And the worst thing you can do when you're planting is, bend the roots. is, is a J root. Yeah, is to have the roots turn up like this, the tree will certainly die. So you wanna kinda use your hand and shepherd them down in there. I'm gonna come out a little bit further here, then you'll get deeper. Go back and forth with your wedge, like that. That's, that's one problem when you cut down a tree. You can cut down the tree, but you can't cut the roots very well. 
No, you can't. See, come and look at this. You see how we got a nice, a nice hole there? Mm -hmm. So we'll gently feed those roots down in there, making sure that they don't J. And we don't want it too shallow, and we don't want it too deep. And I'll run my hand down there. I'll give it a little. Sometimes I'll push it down beyond, mm -hmm. and then pull it back up. Now, what you want to do is press that in there. Take your wedge. Come on the other side of it and drive that down in there and then press that back and that will close up all those voids and then you can even if you could even take some of the sawdust and use this as a mulch it'll help hold that moisture in there and it won't dry out so readily mm -hmm. and there you have it so you do the next one okay I just noticed that we use exactly the same tools to plant it, or to kill a tree as we do to plant one. Pretty profound, Jack. I am a Worthy profound of, person. Worthy of some more consideration, huh? Mm-hmm. Mind your water bottle or you'll lose it. I guess your papa didn't see that one coming, huh? Nah. There we go. New tree. All right, I want you to put the last one uh, just about where you're at. Okay. Right there on the bottom side. So how does what we do here, how does this play into our, uh, uh, what we talked about in our, uh, uh, Bible, our Bible study this morning? Um, well, we were talking about how, uh, which part of it? The Samaritans or? We're talking about the, uh, the olive tree, the grafted branch versus, versus the natural branch. Oh, it's kind of an added thing that it's part of the tree, but it'll never be exactly the same. Uh huh. So these are, uh, it, you know, the thing that, uh, I think why Christ used so many agricultural references um, in describing what the kingdom of God was like and you know, the relationship of God to man and God, using those things that, you know, to us it's a bit alien, <clears throat> like when we're talking about I am the, the vine and and the good shepherd and all that and like what do we know about shepherds right have you ever seen a shepherd mm -mm. right or have you ever dressed vines do you do are you are you a vintner a vintner vintner a person who makes deals with grapes and makes wine and grape juice mm -mm. no i drink it but those references uh to me uh, are such a reminder when i think about god is the trunk of the tree he's the roots he's the one that where from all nutrients come right mm -hmm. but we are manifested in the branches the branches if you were to cut this branch off of here and throw it on the ground separate it from the trunk what would happen to it it would die it would wither and die why would it die because it wouldn't have any nutrients right it doesn't live for itself it draws life its life force from the trunk and that's why God gave us those analogy and that's why it's so important to spend time in nature because all of these things everything that we look at that God created is a reminder um, of that connection and when we remove ourselves from that there's nothing wrong with going to the city and being in the city but uh, you don't want to spend all your time there because there's very few things there that are remind you of the message of God of that connection um, like what we have right here we can look at this and every time I look at a tree and I see that that it triggers that I remember that I'm like I gotta remember to stay connected to God because if I disconnect myself then I'm no different than that dead branch laying over there that fell off the tree it separated itself it may look alive for a little while it may look alive for a week or so but over time eventually the further you get away from it the longer you are disconnected from that life force um, 
the more that life force drains out of you. Just what you wanted is another Bible study, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Good job today. All right. We'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, Jack, uh, you didn't get to do a whole lot of cutting today, but we're out of time. Um, and then we'll get to work on that next saw log. And we might even do some saw milling if the snow doesn't come. All right. We'll see you guys in the next video.